Hey guys, welcome to the Real Life Podcast. Happy April. We're ending April and as we come to a close, um, hey, for today, I wanted to just meet with you guys for a little bit. We thought it would be really fun to spend this week's podcast almost just having like a little devotional time where I get to share a message with you of what the Lord has been teaching me. <clears throat> so picture us in together at a coffee shop in a Bible study. I wish we could have like, Jamie Ivy has the happy hour. I wish we could have like, the coffee hour with Alyssa or something, but I got my coffee. It's still early in the morning. And I just wanted to share a little bit with you guys um, what the Lord has been teaching me and what he's been speaking to my heart the last couple weeks. So, hey, this, if you had l- found me <laughs> behind Instagram, behind the podcast, all the emails um, the last couple weeks, you would have probably seen a lot of me in my room <laughs> on my knees before the Lord. Um, that last week I literally took the duvet cover of our king size bed. I wrapped it around myself. I felt like I just needed to be comforted and held and I love blankets and I knelt before my bed and I just laid it all out before the Lord. And it's not that every morning is like that or that I, I have so much growing to do in prayer and seeking his face. But I feel like we're just in a season where things feel really intense right now and they're good things and it's also hard things and it just feels like, wow, this is a lot and I feel like I'm kind of at the end of myself and I just need Jesus. And man, I hope though that my life, like even when life isn't as intense, that that will still be my heart posture where I just realize like, Lord, I need you every hour. I need you every day. I need you. And I am so grateful that we have a Savior and a Lord and a Father who is not burdened by that. He, in, in fact, it's the complete opposite. He asks us to come, to be with Him, to be in His presence. And He never tires of us. We're never too much for Him. He never is like, oh, here's Alyssa again. Like, she's so needy. He actually loves it when we are needy and helpless and burdened because then He gets to step in. And it's in our weakness that He is made strong. It's in our weakness that we get to be intimate with Him and He gets to refresh our souls. And that's who he is, guys. He is the refresher of souls. He is the living water and he satisfies our deepest needs, our deepest longings, our needs to be loved and to be noticed and to, for wisdom, to be known, to be understood. He knows us and he loves to commune with us. He loves it when we come to him. I was just talking, got off an interview for another podcast and She reminded me of how, don't we love it as parents when our child comes to us and they ask us for help? And they need us like when they get a a scrape or they're sad or, you know, when we're like going, we're having a heart to heart with one of our kids and they are just honest with us. Like, mommy, I feel so sad because blah, blah, blah. Um, I feel like, oh, Jesus, thank you that they're coming to me. Thank you that they're letting me see into their heart. That is what I, I was just praying today in Proverbs. There was a a verse in, um, I think, chapter 21 that says like, son, give me your heart. And that's what I long for as a parent, that my child would like let me into their heart and that we would be intimate with each other, that I could encourage them and teach them and they would feel safe and I could like pour into them. And that's how Jesus is with us. He loves it when we come to him. And I think sometimes we um, just, it's easier. It can feel easier to go to other things instead of Jesus, or maybe we're fearful of how he's going to respond or fearful that we'll have to actually come face to face with our fears or what we're feeling or that he will respond in a not loving way or a not kind way. But the truth and the reality is, is that Jesus is the most kind, the most loving. I've been sitting in this verse all week. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Our God is so kind and loving and he loves to love us. I was reading John 4 last week. And I know a lot of you are familiar with it, of how Jesus goes to the well in Samaria, which in itself was a crazy thing because Jews did not um, 
hang out with Sumerians at all. A lot of division there, similar to our current culture era of like division, even division in the church. And he goes there in the middle of the day and he sits at the well and this woman comes up to draw water and you know that it's the middle of the day. So where no one gets water, usually it's in the morning. And so you know that this woman probably might be an outcast in her community, probably doesn't want to be seen, doesn't have a lot of friends, is looked down upon. And she encounters Jesus. He's sitting there and he's talking to her and he says, well, I'll go up a little bit more. It says, the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God, And who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. God is our living water. He knows that we are thirsty and he longs to satisfy our thirst with his living water. His living water. It's not stagnant water. It's not just like stale. It's living. It's moving. It's fresh. And he is our living water who fills us up each day with his goodness and his presence. He goes on to say in verse 13, Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever, talking about the water from the well, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Jesus' water that he gives us is eternal life. And not just once we come to know him and have salvation, but it's everyday eternal life. The um, definition is real, genuine, active, vigorous, devoted to God, blessed. That is eternal life, that we are blessed who put their trust in him and it lasts forever. I want, that's what I want. I want to have a real, genuine life that is vigorous and devoted to God and who is blessed because I trust in him. But this, the part that really stuck out to me in verse four was when he says to the woman, if you knew the gift of God, if you knew who is sitting before you right now, the Messiah, the Savior, the gift of God. And I wonder how many of us need to hear that today or in our everyday moments or on the Tuesday morning when life feels like it's all falling apart, that God is right before us. He's longing to be with us, to take our burdens, to fill it with his lightness and his goodness. And he is the gift to us, guys. He is our gift We get God, and because we get God, we get enough. And no matter what we may be struggling with, whether it's how to shepherd our kids and things that they're struggling with, things in our marriage, in our communities, in our friendships, financials, um, longings unfulfilled, regardless of what may be happening in our life, which are very real, We have God, and because we have a God, we have all that we need, and we are blessed because He is ours. In Isaiah 55, um, I've been going back to this chapter a lot, and um, I'm just going to read a little bit to you. It Starting in verse 1, it says, Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Come to Jesus, come to his living waters. And he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk with money and without price. God longs to give us good things and it's free. I have nothing to give, but God gives it to me willingly and freely. It says in chapter, in verse two, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me here that your soul may live and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. 
in this chapter, the Lord is kind of setting a picture and Im- imagery of a feast, a table. He has this table. It talks about this in Psalm 23 too. He has this table that he's prepared for us, this feast. It's him. And it's not just in heaven at the wedding feast. It is every day, every moment. He asks us to come to his table, to sit and rest a while, to eat of his goodness and to commune with him. And I think I love the imagery of feasting because whenever I think of a really fun celebration or the sweetest time with friends or um, anything where I feel like, oh, that was a moment of joy, a lot of the times it is around the table with feasting, you know, birthday parties where we go around and we share what we love about the person, really special dinners with people that we don't get to see all the time. Um having like groups of women friends come over and just being able to bless them with having good food and having good fellowship. And I think especially as you know, we Bethkies like to eat. My husband, Jeff, loves to eat rich food. (laughs) And um, I tell this story about one time when we went over to our friend's house and she's Colombian. And so whenever she makes food, she like makes it for 20 people and it's so good. And so she made a bunch of tacos that night and Jeff, he ate 10 tacos and not just like little street tacos that you finish in three bites, but like we're talking the big Costco size tacos, like huge tacos. He ate 10 of them. And then at the very end, he's he had the boldness to say, oh, and Alexa, anything that's left over, can we bring it home? Which I was like, oh my gosh. But, and of course, they're like, of course, of course. And it fed us for the rest of the week. Um, and so when I think of feasting, I think of Jeff. And I also think like, man, I think that the Lord loves that about his heart. And that's how he wants our heart posture to be when we come to the table where we we aren't stingy and we aren't fearful and we don't hold back, but we just like are grateful and we fill up and we enjoy every bite and we spend time with him and we aren't afraid to just lay it all down at his feet all of our desires, all our burdens, all our unknowns and our crying and our anxieties and worries, and we lay it at the feet of Jesus at his table where he has laid it for us. And all we have to do is to come. We don't have to get it all together or figure out what to say or kind of deal with our burdens to some extent and then bring it to him. Our burden is what allows us to come to Jesus. Um, I'm reading this new book, which apparently has been out for a while. And all of you have said like, oh, isn't that the best book ever? I don't know why I'm just now hearing about it called Gentle and Lowly. And um, I'm loving it so much. And it just talks about the kindness of the father and how he he is so kind to us. And in it, he says um, that we are needy and our burden is what qualifies us to come. We don't have to unburden or collect ourselves. We come to him freely with our burden. And man, like, isn't that what we long for? Somebody to just come and give our burden to where he doesn't say you're too much for me, or I don't know how to help you, or wow, you're so emotional, but he embraces us and he just gets so much delight and joy in that we're coming to him broken and burdened and fearful. And he wants to meet us there. Jesus' heart is so tender and open. It says the only area in scripture, and it talk, this book talks about it, where it talks about Jesus' heart is in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, where he says, I am gentle and lowly in heart. Meaning Jesus is tender, he is kind, and he is humble. And he loves it when the humble seek his face. It says that he is open and welcoming. He's accommodating. He is understanding with arms wide open. He just wants us to come to him. And I love this part that the author in the book says, Dane Ortland. he says, he doesn't just meet us in our deepest need. He lives in our place of need. He never tires of sweeping up us into his tender embrace. It's his very heart. It's what gets him out of bed in the morning that he longs to embrace us. So he has spread this feast before us. He has told us that he is the gift of God. He is living water. Um, 
him, to come and be with him, to bow your feet at him. And you know, truthfully, with little kids and life and busyness, it may not look like being on our knees every morning before we wake up. Although that is my heart's desire, and man, I long to be more like that, to really seek him in prayer and spend so much time with him there. But sometimes in the everyday, mon- everyday real lifeness, that doesn't always happen. And so it could just be as we're in the car and we're just praying with our kids or at the table and we pull out a a book and we read a blessing over them. Or the other day we were driving somewhere and I, truthfully, I kind of lost it with the kids. I just was like, Lucy had been crying the whole ride and screaming and I just, other things happened and I just like broke down and I just told the kids and not the best way. It was not my best mothering moment at all. But I just eventually said, guys, I just need you to pray for me right now because mommy's going to lose it. And so I asked Cannon to pray and his sweet little prayer just was exactly what I needed. And so then I was able just to take a moment and pray over the kids and pray for our moment. And so that was not my mothering moment of ever. And I, I, but I'm sharing it to say that's the reality of life sometimes is real life with kids and sin and frustrations and things that don't go the way that we planned, but just taking the time to stop and just like pray to the Lord and ask him and come back to him and be reminded of who he is. Um, My good friend, Sarah Haggerty talks about, and we have a podcast coming out with her that was just so good, but about just taking that time in your day. And it's usually when you don't want to the most and opening a psalm and just praying through that psalm with all your big emotions like god this is what i feel right now but your word says this but this is how i'm feeling but your word says this and just like adoring god in that moment just being with him coming to him in the everyday so isaiah 55 it says come to him come to the feast and then in verse 12 towards the end it says for you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. And that is my prayer for you guys today, that as you come to Jesus, as you lay it at his feet, as you just spend time with him and are intimate with him and love him, that you will be able to then go out, go out to pour out to your kids in your workplace with your family out this weekend, that you would go out in joy because God is with you and you would go out in peace, not having any worry or anxiety or fear, resting in the God who is stable and steadfast and is our anchor and our rock in the storm. He holds us in his hand and he is in control and he is a good God who loves us. I've been thinking so much about joy lately, and I love what Elizabeth Elliot said about joy. She said, joy is not the absence of trouble. It is the presence of God. As we sit with Jesus, as he goes about the day with us, as we abide in him and come to him over and over and over, we will be full of joy because we are with God and his presence is the fullness of joy. Man, I can't wait to be in his presence in heaven in the, when we're done with the not yet and we are fully with him and that there will be full joy all the time. But even now in the not yet, we still can have joy and be full of joy as we are present with him. He is in us. He is with us. We just have to come to the waters, come be with him, come drink of him and know that The gift of God is with us today. So friends, I pray that you will come to him today and that you will be able to go out into your weekend full of joy and peace and then start next week from that position, from knowing that you are the beloved of Jesus, that he is with you today and that he wants you to go out in joy and peace and he is meeting you in every moment, in every pain point, in every unknown. He is with you and loves you. He is so kind. Thanks for being on today, guys.